Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on, give the Lord a hand. Praise on this morning for about five or ten seconds for the merciful blessings he's bestowed upon us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Today we're getting ready to call our Sunday school to order. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to pray followed by the uh, reading of the lesson by our very own First Lady, Lady Brown. And then I'll come back and we'll expound on the lesson. Eternal God, we thank you this morning for your loving kindness and your tender mercy. We thank you, Lord, for your grace and for the many blessings you've bestowed upon us. Lord, we pray that you will let your word this morning take root in our hearts. Uh, God, we ask that you would give us an understanding that we may hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. In Jesus' name, and Lord, we pray that you let this word fall on good ground. In Jesus' name, we ask these and all other blessings. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord for that prayer from our teacher on this morning, Elder Stacker. Good morning, listening audience. We're into the 12th lesson of this quarter, May 23rd, 2021. And our subject on this morning, Ezekiel, street preacher to the exiles. Ezekiel, street priest preacher to the exile and our lesson scripture focus on Ezekiel 18th chapter verses 1 through 9 and verses 30 through 32 but I'm going to put it this way Ezekiel 18th the whole chapter so wake up call Bible truth on this morning Ezekiel preaches that God is just he is punishing Judah for their sins. And, oh, not and, not their parents' sin. Let me read that again. Ezekiel preaches that God is just. He is punishing Judah for their sins, not their parents' sins. I remember a verse will focus on Ezekiel 18 chapter the fourth verse, <clears throat> which reads as follows. Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so all the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Lesson aim on this morning by the end of this lesson. We will analyze behavior in which we blame others as the cause, commit to being responsible for our behavior, and engage in responsible behavior that finds favor with God. Life need for today's lesson. It is easy to blame our background or upbringing for the misfortunes we face. Question asked, what is the role of personal responsibility? Well, Ezekiel warns Israel that each person will answer 
for his or her behavior and that all must repent of their sinful ways and obey God's commands to find favor with God. Our introductory, which reads as follows. The prophet Ezekiel lived during the Babylonian exile and was acted as a prophet for approximately 20 years from 593 BC to at least 573 BC. Ezekiel lived as an exile according to the title of the book that bears his name. He was carried away as a captive with Jehoiakim in about 597 BC. His prophetic call came to him in the fifth year of Jehoiakim's captivity, around about 593 BC. Ezekiel held a prominent place among the exiles and was frequently consulted by the elders. In the ninth year of his exile, he lost his wife by some sudden and unforeseen tragedy. And you can read more of that in uh, Ezekiel chapter 8. According to the information in the book's opening, Ezekiel was the son of the priest Buzzy. 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 Ezekiel's name in Hebrew means God strengthens this child. Or possibly, may God strengthen this person because he was of a priestly family. Ezekiel probably had a good education, especially in the law. And his father may even have had some influence in Jerusalem, the time and manner of Ezekiel's death are unknown. For the reading of the lesson by our very own First Lady, Lady Brown. Come on, give God some praise on this morning. I'm glad to be back. Amen. And happy hour. Uh-huh. Yes, Lord. I'm glad to be right back here in happy hour. I call this happy hour. Why? Because I'm happy to be serving the Lord. I'm happy to be saved. I'm happy to have a relationship with him. Praise the Lord. Many folk have had their happy hour last night. Amen. Praise the Lord. But I'm having happy hour right here. This is the real happy hour. Amen. Praise the Lord. I get happy when I think about uh, doing what God say. I get happy about what he's done for me. Are y'all with me? Praise the Lord. I get happy, amen, when I have to come to the church. The Bible say, behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Am I right? He said, it's like the precious oil that ran down Aaron's beard and it settled, ran down his robe and it settled, uh, bless his name, in the hem of the garment. Can you say, yes, Lord? Amen. Praise the Lord. I pray that you'll follow me via Facebook. Uh, follow us, let me say, James Temple, via Facebook uh, or any other social media outlets. I have no doubt that God will bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord if you just come on in and fellowship with us on today. Amen. Our topic today talks about uh, Ezekiel, praise the Lord, who is what we would call the street preacher to the exiles. He was a street preacher to the exile. In other words, he just was a solid, good bone preacher. Mm -hmm. He preached the unadulterated uh, message of God. Am I right? Praise the Lord. I can't say the gospel of Christ because, <laughs> you know, he would prophesy the gospel of Christ. But we thank God for this prophet Ezekiel. We thank God for him because he showed us. And when we when the first lady read in the lesson, before I even go to the lesson, I just want to give you some historical facts. Uh, of the, set the setting. Let me give you the historical setting, uh, praise the Lord, for the Israelites. Uh, praise the Lord. They were, amen, praise the Lord. Uh, Israel was in Babylonian exile. They were barren from their land. They couldn't go back home. Uh, to be exiled means to not be able to go back to your native land. But here's the deal. Israel didn't love God. And when we read in a lesson or in the introduction, you read how God took Ezekiel's wife from some unseen uh, uh, accident, not, not even accident, but from, they, they can't really figure out why, uh, what happened to uh, Ezekiel's wife. They know that she did die. And uh, 
This same prophet, God told him, don't even mourn his wife because God said, Ezekiel, I'm going to take your wife with a stroke of my hand. And uh, he said the people won't even. And he told Ezekiel not to mourn for his wife. And so but God was doing that because he wanted to show the Israelites when I come in or when the Babylonians come in and destroy the temple or decimate the temple. You're going to have the attitude as Ezekiel. He told Ezekiel, don't mourn for your wife. Don't let a tear run down your cheek. Praise the Lord. And he said Israel is going to have the same attitude when the Babylonians come in and destroy the temple. They won't cry. They won't mourn. They won't do any of these things because they was just so caught up in their sins. Are y'all with me? Amen. Praise the Lord. But our topic says uh, street preacher to the exiles. Praise the Lord. He was preaching this message of God. Praise the Lord. Preaching this message of repentance to the exiles that had come from Jerusalem. Now they find themselves in Babylon. They find themselves in a strange land. Are y'all with me? You know, the Bible says when they were down there, the Babylonians told them, why don't you sing us some of them Zion songs? That's, that's what they were tempting them with and, and, and asking them, won't you sing us some of them church songs, in other words? And they said to the Babylonians, how can we sing in a strange land? Praise the Lord. They were, they were, they were tempting them. They were, uh, praise the Lord, poking at them. Are y'all with me? That's how the devil does you. He gets you in a strange land and then he pokes fun at you. That's why you don't need to go to the strange land. Can you say yes, Lord? That's why you do what God say do so you don't go into captivity. Are y'all with me? Praise the Lord. So they were here. They, they, these were Jews who had been taken exile. They couldn't go back to their native land. So now they find themselves down in Babylon. Praise the Lord. And why were they down there in Babylon? Because one of the first things they did, they refused to repent. They worshiped idols. Uh, bless his name. Come on. Uh, they, they worshiped idols. They 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 uh they, they, they did things contrary to the law of God. They did things contrary to what God wanted them to do. They began to marry and intermingle with the people. Now, now God told them to do one thing. They do something totally different. God told them when Joshua, he said, when you go into the land to possess the land, don't become like the people. Now, God gave you the land, but all he wanted you to do is not become like the people. But they got to them in themselves and they become they became worse than the people. They became worse than the people. And we'll get to that in just a second. Praise the Lord. So so Jeremiah uh, was prophesying, praise the Lord, to the Israelites while they were down there in Babylon. Praise the Lord. And, and, and we'll see that. Uh, let, let's just go ahead and go to the first verse. And it's reason such. It says, Jeremiah chapter 18, I'm sorry, Ezekiel chapter 18. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 1 reads as such. It says, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, what mean ye this proverb concerning the land of Israel? Saying, the fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on the edge. So, so Ezekiel asked the question. Uh, he's actually talking, this God is asking the question through Ezekiel. What the Israelites had did was their forefathers had got out of the will of God. And because of their forefathers, praise the Lord, the nation was in sin. But when God questioned them about their shortcomings and what they didn't do, they began then to blame the fathers they begin to blame their ancestors, saying, listen, the reason why we in this situation is because of my parents. Mm -hmm. The reason I'm here is because of my parents. Now, they neglected to say how wrong they were. The only thing they can expect and only thing they wanted to do is point the, frank, the, point the finger and the blame on their ancestors. Mm hmm. How many of you know your ancestors not the reason why you in your business, you messing up now? Folk come up with all kind of excuses why they won't serve God. My mama did this. My daddy did this. Uh, this is why I'm not doing it. Or, you know, I'm missing that. You know, now don't misunderstand me. Don't misunderstand me. I believe that as, as a Christian, or as a man of God, or as a man, period, you don't lead your children into sin. 
Because it's harder for you to get them out of sin than it is for you to praise the Lord. It's easier to lead them in sin, but it's hard for you to get them out of it. How, why do I say that? Because I've seen people uh, praise the Lord. Uh, yeah, I take a little sip with my son. Yeah, you, you, you might take a sip, but your son going to end up being an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, I smoke a little weed with my daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might smoke a little weed, but she going to end up on crack. That's why you don't sin. Listen, if I'm a sin, God forbid, if I'm a sin, though, I ain't sinning with my kids. You can hang that up because I am not going to be the one that leads you in sin and can't get you out of it. See, so, so, so they were trying to blame the fathers and the mothers because of their show coming, because of they, what they wouldn't do. But they chose not to do what they were supposed to themselves. Mm hmm. Stop telling me what your mom and daddy do. I need some folk to be a champion and say, you know what? I'm a defeat. I'm going to go against all odds. I'm going to be successful in the face of whatever adversity I have to face. Something my coach used to tell me when I was coming up. Uh, I, remember, I remember this story like it was yesterday, and it, it bothers me even to this day. And I told, I, I made it my business to never be a weak chump, just don't have no fight. I come to school one day, and I have no book. I have I haven't left my books yet. I have no ink pen, no paper. Now I play football. I was pretty good. And what he says to me, he wasn't even concerned about what I did on the field. His words to me was, "Where's your books at?" I said, "I don't know, Coach." I left it. And then he asked, "Well, where your pen? What you gonna write with?" And in my mind, I'm thinking, only thing he's really concerned about is me playing football. And so he says to me, uh, after I gave him all those excuses, he looked me in my eyes, he said, excuses are for losers. And, I, and that just got under my skin. And you know, that have blessed me all, uh, from the time of 18, that's blessed me. Because I, I, I never want to be one that make excuses for what I can't do because I just don't want to do it. Are y'all with me? And some of us, are in a position now. We use excuse why we can't be here, why we can't serve God. Praise the Lord. I got a toenail, my toenail bad, whatever. Praise the Lord. Like a mosquito bite. We look for the least reason we can find to say why we can't serve God. Mm -hmm. But God is saying, I'm not blaming your parents for your wrongdoing. You're going to have to meet God for yourself. Can you say yes, Lord? So they couldn't use that Proverbs. That Proverbs. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, What many ye this proverbs concerning the land of Israel, saying, The fathers have sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on the edge. Listen, because of my mom, you know, she did me this when I was uh, 12. You know, now you're 50, and you still can't. Man, you mean to tell me she did that at 12, and you still hadn't gotten over it? Uh, because of my uh, cousin, he did me this. And listen, you mean to tell me you're 70, and you still ain't got over it? You're not serving God because of that? Come on. God is saying, no, nah, we're not using these as, praise the Lord, excuses. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. So, verse 3 says, is, verse 3 says, as the Lord liveth. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. I'm sorry. Did I, yeah, I read verse, verse, verse 3. As the Lord liveth, said, as the Lord, as, the, as I live, said the Lord, Ye shall have no occasion anymore to use this proverb in Israel. You're not going to have this no more. You're not going to be able to uh, use as an excuse why you can't do this. Why you can't do that. Praise the Lord. Why I, 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 I can't be successful. God said, I'm taking away the excuses. The Bible said in the book of Acts, at one time, God winked at our ignorance. But now he calls it all men to repent. You'll find that in the book of Acts chapter 17, if I'm not mistaken. But he causes every man now to repent. What do he mean? He went that at one time God overlooked your ignorance. But now he's not overlooking your ignorance. God is saying, listen, if you're going to have relationship with me, if you're going to walk with me, praise the Lord, you're going to have to get off your mother's blessings, your father's blessings, and you're going to have to seek me for yourself. <laughs> Are you with me? And let me help you. Sometimes God will remove the, see, he'll remove the mother and father out the way so he can have a relationship with you. That's what God wants. Are y'all with me? He, he, he tired of you leaning on folk 
to get from him what you need. Why don't you just go to the source? You know, I want something from God. I, I, I'm not waiting on nobody to pray for me. Thank God for you. Don't misunderstand me. I need your prayer. Let me make sure I make this clear. Elder Stacker need your prayers. Pray for me, please. But I'll tell you what, just in case you don't pray for me, I'm going to pray for myself. Hmm? So I'm not waiting on my parents to do it for me. I got to do it for myself. And that's what God is saying. Don't use your parents as a cloak of malicious no, maliciousness no more. I want you to stand up and do something for me on your own. Are y'all with me? Praise the Lord. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And let me say this here before I go any further. Uh, some people don't like to uh, change because they say, well, you know, I I'm just like my mom. Because because. When you read this here, if you don't make a change, then your kid come up. They don't make a change. And look at the generation through generation. They're doing the same thing. But I've heard people say, I'm just like my mama. Well, your mama needed to be reborn and you need to be reborn. See, I, 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 I act like I got the character of my daddy. Yeah, yeah, you need to be born again also. The Bible says this here. Uh, uh, you are not. Uh, it says. We are the children of God. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It says, ah, the thought slipped my mind, but it'll come back to me. Praise the Lord. But, 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 but God is, uh, in other words, you, don't have, you can't follow behind your mama's spirit, your daddy's spirit, saying this is just who I am. You better turn your life over to the law. Are y'all with me? Verse 4. Behold, is what God say, all souls are mine, is what he says. All souls are mine. I'm going to ask the question. Are we all, mm, 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 are we all God's children? Huh? Are we all God's children? Uh, because God did say all souls are mine, but are we all God's children? Praise the Lord. I, I'm going to leave that for later on in the lesson. Uh, and I, but I want you to answer it. If you can, write and, and tell me. You believe that we're all God's children. I'd appreciate it. But he says, all souls are mine. Uh, praise the Lord. The soul of the Father as well as the soul of the Son is what God say. But the soul that sinneth, it shall die. What does that mean? God looked at us individual. He don't look at it like, well, uh, my mother did this here and uh, you're going to pay for what your mother did. He don't look at it that way. Now, he don't also look at it this way. My mother was a praying woman. Uh, 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 my father was a praying man, but I'm not. And so God going to say, well, they were, but you're not. So he looks at us individually because he want a relationship with you. Mm -hmm. So God say, all souls are mine. Every soul. The soul of the father. So is the soul of the son. All of the souls, uh, praise the Lord, belong it to God. All of them. But the soul that sin it shall die. Now listen, if I'm trying to walk upright, mama, I'm trying to do what the law say do. Praise the Lord. I'm trying to uh, 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 be, be courageous for the Lord. Praise the Lord. And you tell me, amen, that, that I'm going to go to hell because my mother did something. No, that God would be an unjust God if he did that. So God says, no, I'm going I'm to judge you individually. I'm, I'm a, I'm, if you doing what God say do, God bless you. If your mom and daddy not doing what God say do, that's on them. God would be an unjust God if he judged you based on what your parents did. Are y'all with me? Praise the Lord. Now, let me say this here. You'll read it, and I'm quite sure somebody going to probably bring it up to your attention. Well, David uh, prayed for Solomon, and, and God said he wouldn't destroy it for Solomon's, I mean, for David's sake. Praise the Lord. Yes, we do know that. We know that. And, and, and let me say, God we may, may keep your kids for some time because you're praying for them. But at some point, point God going to expect you to do something for yourself and stop leaning on your mother, your father or uh, to, to pray for you and, and, and expect you to get up and have some drive on your own. Am I right? That's what the Bible says. So, so verse 4 says, all souls are mine. The soul of the father as well as the soul of the son. But the soul that sin it, it shall die. Praise the Lord. That's what the law says. The soul that sin it going to die. You, you, you full of the devil, the soul that sent it, it will die. Listen, I got to go to heaven. I can't be, listen, I can't, I can't, 
allow people to pull me. And I know it's talking about parents, but I'm just saying people in general. I can't be concerned about what people ain't doing and, and go to hell because they not. Uh -uh. I'm trying to go to heaven. Uh, if it costs me my life, I'm trying to go. Are y'all with me? Praise the Lord. So verse four says, verse five says, but if a man be just mm -hmm, and do that which is lawful and right, mm, praise the Lord, and had not eaten up on the mountains, neither had lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel, neither had defiled his neighbor's wife, nor had come near to a menstruous woman. What does this mean? So, let me make sure I make myself clear. If it's in the Bible, and if it's in the lesson, we're going to touch it. Are y'all with me? If it's in the Bible, it's in a lesson. Now, I, I want people uh, to make sure they understand this here because many people, we got some men with some messed up thought processes. They got some messed up thought processes. But God was telling the Israelites, the ones that were eating on the mountain, they were eating meat sacrificed to idols. And God is a just God. He didn't want them on the mountain eating meat that was offered to idols. Now, let me help you. When you read the Bible in the book of Corinthians, the apostle Paul says, if meat caused my brother to stumble, I won't eat meat while the world stands. That's what Paul says. But Paul knew that if he ate the meat that was offered to idols, it didn't matter to him because he didn't believe in the idol anyway. But these people were eating meat offered to idols, and when everybody else saw them eating the meat, it caused them to stumble. That's why he said, if I eat meat, I won't eat meat. If meat caused my brother to stumble, I won't eat it while the world's standing. In other words, I won't eat it around you. Let me, let me, let me make myself clear. I love sweets. I absolutely love it. Listen, I will eat your sweets in a minute. You better not leave nothing sweet around me. You're going to be mad with me. I promise you that. So I'm going to say this here, but I'm, but I'm, I'm going to show you something. I believe I'm saved. I believe it. I don't celebrate Halloween. But if they got some candy in there, huh? I would just throw the wrap away anyway. I don't care nothing about the Halloween, but it's possible that somebody may see me and say, oh, look at y'all, they're eating that, eating that Halloween candy. Listen, man, it's candy. I don't care nothing about the Halloween, but now if it's going to cause you to stumble, you'll never see me eat it. You see what I'm saying? So, but they were eating meat offered to idols, and God was saying, praise the Lord, uh, 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 um, um, I didn't want my people to be eating things that were sacrificed to idols. Are y'all with me? Why? Because God said my way is better than anybody else's way. And let me say this here. Let me, let me finish reading. Verse 6 says, And he had eaten up upon every mountain, neither had he lifted up his eyes to idols of the house of Israel. What is an idol? Idol is something, with a, it's an appearance. It's not, it's not the real thing. It's an idol. Let me tell you something. Men and women, don't, we don't never idolize nobody. Are y'all with me? We don't idolize God because he's not an idol. Are y'all with me? So we idolize. When people say, oh, that's my idol. No, I ain't got no idol. The Bible say mark the perfect man for the end of that man is the way of peace. People give more credit to folk rap game, give more credit to people ba playing basketball than they do a man just trying to work and do right. Huh? That's who we have to mark. In other words, I, wanna, I want the integrity and the characteristics of this man. That's what God says. So, they were eating meat that was offered to idols. Now, watch this here. This is why God, this is God loved holiness. So, he says, and neither had defiled his neighbor's wife. See, these jokers was out of the will of God. They wouldn't repent. And then they land with their friend, their neighbor's wife. And, 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 and God said, I, I despised that. God didn't want that because God knew that if that were to happen, it's going to cause some trouble. Are y'all with me? Now watch this here. This is the part I'm talking about. You got some. If it's in here, I'm going to touch it. 
Mm. Neither had come near to a mistress woman. What that mean? I'm, I'm going to help you. When a man is married and his wife is on a cycle, you don't touch the woman. You don't touch her. That's what the Bible says, in other words. Leave the lady alone until she finishes her cycle. It's a cleansing time. Are y'all with me? And God say, praise the Lord, listen. Uh, I've, I've, I've heard, I ain't even going to go there, but, but yeah, leave the lady alone until it's time for God to bring y'all back together. Are y'all with me? But they were so messed up in the head. Uh, they were so messed up and, and, and messed, I mean, just all messed up in the head that they was just doing anything. Let me, let me help you. I believe this here. Don't misunderstand me. The Bible says marriage is honorable. Mm, that's what Paul said. And the bed is undefiled. Between a husband and a wife. That's it. But it's some restrictions that you just can't do in marriage. Oh, bless his name. Y'all get it. Good, I'm moving on. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I believe you got it. All right. Amen. Verse 7 says, And he and had not opposed any, but had restored the debtors his pledge. Now this is what God's saying. There were people who had money, but they wouldn't, once the people paid their debt, they wouldn't let release the people from their pledge. Righteousness can't run down like a river, and righteousness can't flow like a, uh, uh, like a mighty stream until people do righteous. Why you think our insurance be so high? Because you got so many folk doing some old insurance fraud. My insurance all out of the sky, all out of the roof because you burn your car somewhere. Man, now I got to pay extra. You know why prices go up in stores? Because people steal. These people didn't want to change what they were doing. I'm a, I know you paid your money, but I'm going to press you anyway. Let me help you. You stay away from them. Ah, oh, bless his name. Them, what they call it? Cash. What they call them things? The store. Uh, 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 it slipped my mind. The, the cash app store, whatever they call it. America Cash, whatever they call them. I can't remember what they call them. I know they give you cash. Ca cash advance. Stay away from them things. Stay away from them. They're going to charge you out the world. They, listen, and you notice where... I'm not going to go. I, I don't want to go here, but I have to. It's always in a certain neighborhood. That ain't the law. I'm just telling you how it go. But they didn't want to release the people after they got the money. Now, you mean to tell me I've been on the hook for you for, for four years paying, a, paying off a vehicle. And all of a sudden, now nah, I get it. You don't want to give me my title. Man, you don't give me my title. <laughs> See, that's what they were doing, people. And God said, no, I, if, if, I'm a, if you're going to be a child of mine, uh, if you're going to be my per, be a, 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 a child of mine, you're going to have to do what I ask you to do. Mm -hmm. And had not oppressed any, but had restored the debtors his pledge, had spoiled none by violence. See, I'm going to just go drag Jack his car. That's what they're doing today. And, but they want God to bless them. See? I'm going to spoil you. In other words, I'm going to crack you over your head and take your car. And some folk, that's maybe the only car they got. You're going to go crack the man over his head and take his car. God is not pleased with that. But you let a, a street preacher tell you, now you're in exile. You can't even go back to your own homeland because of this foolishness. And you keep doing it. Crack the man in the head and took his car. Carjacking him. I'm just making it plain. I know what the scripture is saying, but I'm making it more plain for you. Is that all right? They were doing it or taking it by violence. Had given his bread to the hungry and had covered the naked with garments. He that had not given forth upon usury, not, neither had taken any, taken any increase. Praise the Lord. 
what that means. Hmm? Don't you go, listen, you need something, you go to the Lord. Don't you go to a long shot. That's what they were doing, brother. The people need help. They go to the long shot. Now, the long shot supposed to, well, not supposed to, he going to charge you. Uh, <laughs> you get 100 from him, he wants 600. That's a long shot. That's what they were doing to people back in those days. If you can't pay it, give me your land. You know that people can't pay that. Brother, sister, ask me for something. Listen, don't worry about paying me back because evidently if you needed it, you didn't have it. If you ask me for it, you can't pay me back. Keep it. But these folk, listen, you get $100, they want $600 back on interest. They were taking it and using it, with, doing usury with it. Huh? Remember the Bible say, he that had clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to vanity, nor useth his money unto usury. In other words, charging over expensive interest. You can't be blessed doing that. God cannot have his way with you doing that. So he says, all souls are mine. I asked the question earlier, are we all God's children? Hmm? Are we really all God's children? Because God did say, all souls are mine. Now you got to know, that's a trick question. <laughs> but I'm going to let you figure it out. We're going to answer it later. Is that all right? Verse 9 says, of the, of verse, the end of 8 says, that hath withdrawn his hand from iniquity, had excused the true judgment between a man and a man. Praise the Lord. What he mean is that and the only way God was going to have his way in these people is if they did not uh, operate in sin. And you, when, you, when you dealt with a man, you dealt with him honestly. You didn't deal with him on some old back type style, I mean, going behind his back doing some old... You know what I always appreciate? If I have a problem with you, I'm not going to go behind your back. I need to go to you. And that's what God wanted. Now, I got a problem with a brother in a church. I'm going to go to somebody else instead of the brother. You know what I call that? Weak. Soft. Men and women, I think you're soft. You, you got to address people. So God wanted them to, if you're going to be honest, if we're going to be honest, let's deal with each other honestly. A man with a man, meaning, he, meaning let's listen, I'm going to look you right in your face like a straight up man and tell you, man, listen, I have an issue with you because of this. God don't want you going behind somebody back doing that. God wants you to address the situation. That's how we get things settled, am I right? If we just attack it straight on. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. Verse 9 says, had walked, uh, had walked in my statutes, praise the Lord, had kept my judgment to deal truly. He is just and shall surely live, said the Lord. See that? He wants you to operate justly. He wants you to, he wants you to function with character. He don't want you to go behind... Okay, he don't want you to go behind somebody's back and do it. He wants you to address them straight up. Wouldn't you appreciate that? Y'all, I tell you right now, folk would have an issue. They, that's, I don't really want to say what we would say back in the day. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. God wants us as men and women to address things right up front because that's how righteousness happens. Look, he said in the book of Proverbs, he says seven, seven things that the Lord hate. A lying tongue, uh, sweet that feet that shed feet that are swift to run to mischief, uh, a proud look, and he, watch, that so a discord among the brethren. God hate that. In other words, he said, if you're going to be righteous, just be righteous. Do what I ask you to do. Fix the thing. Just go ahead on and do what you got to do. Now, it may be tough sometimes, but you got to do it. Easier said than done, but it got to be done. Are y'all with me? So then we jump over from verse 9 down to verse 30. And God says, therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, 
Everyone according to his ways, saith the Lord. Repent and turn yourselves away from your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be in ruin. So what he's saying is that I want a relationship with you. But you have to turn from your wicked ways. Isn't that what who Solomon Solomon said that right in the book of Kings? Uh, praise the Lord. God say praise the Lord. When 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 the temple was being built, and when the temple was being dedicated, Solomon began to pray, and he says praise the Lord to the Lord. Uh, uh, he says, Lord, if Israel happen to get out of the will of God and, 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 and be taken captive. If they would God, if they would turn their face back to Jerusalem, facing the temple and repent, would you have mercy on them? God said, yeah, I'd have mercy. And then he asked him another question. Pre-adventure God that they've stolen, that they've done this or that. He goes on and say about 10 different things. And then he say, if they would turn their face back to Jerusalem and repent, would you would you forgive them? God say, I would. He said, but if my people, which are called out by my name, if they would only humble themselves, which folk don't like to do. I, I, you know, we, we, my wife got a running joke saying people said, now, nah, I know. OK. Anytime. Every, listen, you can't help people that know everything. I already know. I'm trying to help you. I know. Well, listen, if you do this, I know. I know. But God said, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and what? Pray. Turn from the way. Seek my face. Then. But I ain't doing nothing until they humble themselves. God said, you got to repent first and, and humble yourself. And that's what people, you know what it takes? To repent means you got to humble yourself. To re repent means to do this here. I'm wrong. I, I admit that I'm wrong. See, that's now in so doing what you've done is you've humbled yourself. Are y'all with me? You've said to yourself, you know what, man, I'm wrong. Hmm? I've said some things. Let me tell you something. I'm, I'm gonna make you laugh real quick and I'm gonna move on. My wife and I have had some intense fellowship. Intense. I'm thinking I'm right. She thinks you know I'm right. I don't care what you, I'm right. She'll tell you, I'm right. I don't care what you say. And then I have to think about that thing. Wait a minute. Was I wrong? For Hold on. Lord, I can't go repent. <laughs> I can't go repent, Lord. But you got to humble yourself and say, you know what? Maybe I was wrong. Maybe I was too harsh. Then I put a little sugar on it. Can you forgive me? Can't help it. <laughs> That's neither here nor there. Let me stop. Let me stop. But, but it's have, it happened both ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got to come back and say, you know what? I'm wrong. I'm sorry. But it means you got to humble yourself when you repent. You got to break down and say, you know, I'm wrong. Lord, forgive me. Have mercy on me. Are y'all with me? Praise the Lord. Verse 31 says, praise the Lord. Verse 31 says, cast away from you all your transgressions whereby you've transgressed. What is it to have transgressions? It's hidden sin. It's just like iniquity, indulging in your sins. Mm -hmm. Paul said this here. The apostle Paul had told the Jews. The Jews believed in circumcision. Paul didn't. Well, let me not say he didn't believe in circumcision. He didn't believe circumcision can save you. So they were saying, if I'm circumcised, I have a relationship with God. Yes. Praise the Lord. But Paul says. Uh, if I build a game, the things I once destroy, I make myself a transgressor, meaning Paul had gotten delivered. Some of the Jews had gotten delivered. But if they went back to doing the same thing again, he said, I make myself a transgressor all over again. And so God was trying to call his people to come out of their transgressions, tr transgressions. He didn't want, he, listen, he can't bless you in the thing. I hear people say this all the time. Yeah. Now, now your blessing on the way. Wait a minute. You sure it's not a curse? The way you live and you think you're getting a blessing? Uh, I don't know about that. 
And I'm not going to listen. One thing I don't tell people is your blessing because I don't know how you're living. Now, I tell them God can bless you if you do this here. But if I don't know you, I'm not just about to say, yeah, you're blessing on the way. No, that ain't, that ain't how God says it should work. What if the people out of the will of God and I'm telling them they're blessing on the way? Oh, you think, do you think they're really going to repent? Well, my blessing on the way, I can keep living like I'm living. No, I'm not telling you that. What I'm going to tell you is that if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. That's what the Bible say. But if you rebel and refuse, you shall be devoured with the sword. Isn't that what the Bible say? Who said that? I believe Jeremiah said that. Because they wanted to be blessed in their sins. They wanted to be blessed in their transgressions. I didn't start getting really blessed uh, until I really came out of sin. Until I just got sincere. Once I became more sincere and dedicated to God, the Bible say I'll reward her. I'm a rewarder of them that do what? Diligently seek me. If you diligently seek me, then I'll reward you. But you got to diligently seek him. Are y'all with me? So, so, so Paul said, if I build a gang of things I once destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. In other words, I go right back into sin if I build a gang. So, so, so God was telling his people, repent. Come out of your sins. Repent. Come out of your sins. And, and the question was asked, are we all God's children? Because you hear people say, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. Okay. But you, how you live, are you living like a child of God or are you, you know, I mean, because a child of God look like to me would have some characteristics of a child of God. Are y'all with me? Mm -hmm. So the question was asked, am I, are we all God's children? Because God did say all souls are mine, but the soul that sin it, it shall die. Are y'all with me? Praise the Lord. Come on, give the Lord a hand. Praise this morning for uh, the gospel on the day. Amen. Praise the Lord. We believe that the Lord is going to bless us on this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. A beautiful lesson, I might add, by, the, uh, by uh, Isaiah, um, Ezekiel. Amen. Trying to get the nation to come back to reform, trying to reform them from their old ways, trying to. And let me tell you something. Getting people to come out of their sins is like pulling teeth. It ain't like no taking candy from a baby. Let me help you to say that. Getting people to come out of their sin sometimes can be like pulling teeth. It's tough. I'm going to encourage you, saints, don't you go in the sin with your kids. Mm-mm. You try to pull them out of that thing. The worst thing in the world is to see that you let your son, your daughter get involved in sin and praise the Lord. Now you done got saved and they still out there. That's the worst thing in the world to see. Are y'all with me? God bless you. Heaven smile upon you, saints of God. We're getting ready to get our, we're done with our Sunday school on this morning. I pray that this lesson was a blessing to you. Let's stop using our parents and other folk as a cloak of maliciousness. Let's stop doing it. Let's just go ahead on and say, you know what? Lord, here I am. I'm here to do what you want me to do. I'm here to uh, operate like you want me to operate. I'm not going to use no more excuses. Excuses are out the door. Tell this to yourself. Say, I am. A champion. Say it again. I am a champion, meaning I don't settle. I don't settle for nothing but championship. I want to win everything. I win that everything. Are y'all with me? And when you're on the Lord's side, that's what you want to do. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Have a smile upon you. I'm asking that you would fellowship with us. Praise the Lord at our 11 o'clock service. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to have a great time, awesome time in the Lord on today. So without further ado, I'm done, saints of God. I pray that this lesson has been a blessing to you. We will be back here next Sunday. Amen. Same channel. Amen. I'm asking you to have fellowship with us. Uh, praise the Lord. Just like, comment, and share. Amen. We have people looking at us. We want you to come on fellowship with us some more. Am I right? Nothing make a sin out of a saint but the word of God. So praise the Lord. Without further ado, God bless you. Have a smile upon you.